John Slavin to give us an overview of the I-90 track bridge design. All right, thank you, Don. Board members, um, besides being the director of civil instructional engineering, I sometimes get to still have fun and be involved uh, leading some of these projects, and this is one of them, which is pretty unique. I think a lot of you have heard about this, uh, the transition across the floating bridge, and that since this is a unique structure that we asked the IRT asked that we accelerate this piece of the design. So going over to the next slide. This is a, a 3D graphic kind of showing the motions that are going on um, on that bridge and why it's such a unique structure. And can, yeah, go ahead and kick that off. So this just takes us a, a flyby of heading down the uh, HOV lanes uh, that the tracks will be on are currently in that uh, more brown shaded. We come up to where the rails are here. The first part of that bridge is the fixed structure that's actually on piers on the ground. The next is the uh, transition slab in, in, or bridge in light colors. And then to the right there, as I look at it, is the floating section of the bridge. So we have to get across that. The first thing we have is surge that's caused as the lake level goes up and down, the bridge will surge in and out, and we have to accommodate that motion on the bridge. We also have roll that's induced, um, like walking down a dock. If you go out to a boat, as different truck loads, train loads go on that bridge, even the wind loads can cause a little bit of that surge, so it'll roll side to side. Another motion we have on that, which is coming up, is the heave or the lake level going up and down. It uh, currently goes up and down about two feet. Um, as it's operated today, it could change and go up to three feet. The core is looking at that potential so we're going to look to accommodate that. That's literally an act of Congress to change that. Uh, um, so those are the ranges of motion that this bridge has to do. A couple of interesting facts. None of all of these types of motions have been accommodated in track transition slabs or track bridges in the past. Oh, sorry, sway. I forgot about it. sway is also going on. That's the uh, the wind induced. Uh, um, as they get storms from the north and south. So every one of these motions have been accommodated across different transitions um, of tracks in the past. None of those are unique, but we're combining them in a unique way on this bridge. So sort of when people say that it's never been done before, they're correct, and when people say it's all been done before, they're correct. So it's just a matter of pulling those all together. So go ahead to the next slide. So we, we put together some evaluation criteria in order getting a, uh, get a contractor on board. What we wanted, of course, was performance, operating speed, restricted speeds. At some point, if the winds get high enough, um, WashDOT shuts down the bridge itself. So at some point, we would restrict the speeds and maybe even stop the light rail if we had, you know, uh, I think it's in, in excess of 60 mile an hour constant winds for 15 minutes. Parameters, of course, we want reliability, maintainability, and its inspectability, ease of fabrication, life cycle costs, initial costs, customer impact to operation and maintenance. And of course, what we call bridge preservation, that's the WashDOT term for it, is making sure that we preserve these bridges and we don't damage them by uh, installing this on there. Next slide. So, our contracting approach, we had uh, three phases to this contract. Uh, well, phase 1A and B, then a phase two. 1A was to develop alternatives. We came into this design with a, a preliminary engineering, it was called a three-bean concept. We wanted to see if there were some better or other ideas out there. We were gonna evaluate those and then select one uh, going into phase 1B. 1B will, will prepare 90% documents develop a testing plan, and we'll do some component testing of the elements of this track bridge. We have completed phase 1A. Uh, we came up with, uh, in addition to the three beam, we came up with a design called Caesura. Uh, that proved to be uh, highly intriguing and uh, has the best uh, opportunity moving forward, so we've selected that going into 1B. The good thing is we came out of phase 1A with actually two designs we thought would, could work. We could decided to choose just one of those because of uh, developing it, and the Caesura had that. And then finally in phase two, we will um, 
which is in the contract. We'll have to come back to the board to get fee and scope for this, but to actually build the prototype and test that. So the next slide. Um, again, I talked about those two designs. We had the three beam coming out of PE. We developed the Cesura. I'll show you in a second. Um, and very excited about the team we had on, involved with this. It's uh, worldwide experts. We had uh, out of Pueblo, Colorado, there's a testing institute there that does track that's in the team. We have uh, professors from university on it, specialists out of, uh, out of uh, England, uh, Germany, Canada all part of this team. I think we have some of the brightest minds in the world actually working on this, and a lot of these guys just, that's what they live and breathe, and they're very excited to be in this process. And then again, coming out of this, we have also been working hand in glove with Washed Out all the time because of that concept of bridge preservation, wanted to make sure they understood what we were putting on their structure. They agreed that we had two feasible designs and uh, took no deference with us going with the Caesura design. They were clear that it was our job to choose the design. But of course, we looked to them to make sure that they didn't have any concerns with what we chose. And then going on, here is the Caesura alternative that kind of shows how it works. Um, this is where we get into some of these just amazing minds that were de developing this. The central concept in this is we have two wings to this bridge, because as these, as these bridges flex, there's sort of a, an articulated joint right in the middle. So how do you make sure that you don't have a hard spot in your track? This concept is a central support with these wings that actuates the, uh, the ties, if you will, and makes an even curve transition. We call it horizontal or vertical curves uh, for the track. So that it's a smooth, even transition. Um, and that's sort of showing how this design works. There's roller bearings on the side. We're going to be using what are called pendulum bearings for what's shown for rollers uh, in this case, uh, used on a lot of bridges around the country. So that's the design we're taking forward. We're currently in the process of doing component testing. On, on many, we're setting that for component testing. This week, we have some of these people from Pueblo, Colorado out in our shop uh, actuating and testing our vehicles for all the parameters that they're going to use in the model for every uh, joint on that car, how it reacts to um, different loads, conditions to it to make sure that when we design the model, we have every parameter we need. And then from that, we will develop the, uh, the track bridge. We'll do component testing this year. You can go to the next slide. Uh, um, as I said, we completed that first part. We're going to do the, the planning this year at the 90% design, some of the component testing. We expect to come back to you at the end of this year uh, and ask to ed go into the next phase, phase two, which would be actually a uh, prototype testing or a full-size testing of uh, the successful design. Any questions? Well, John, thank you very, very much. I'm glad we've got the, the best minds in the world working on this, it, uh, but it seems like we're making good progress. Uh, we had the potential of losing our quorum, and there are two items on our agenda that uh, we need to take uh, action on. Uh, those would be motion uh, 20, uh, uh, 1201, and uh, zero two. So I'm going to move 